Hey folks, Joseph Isabora here. <sighs> so I just saw Once Upon a Deadpool in glorious PG-13. That's right. A PG-13 version of Deadpool 2. That's what we always wanted. <laughs> Sarcasm. Yeah. Because we all remember what happened back in 2016, just before the original Deadpool came out. A little kid wanted to see the movie Deadpool in feeders, but the feeder owners couldn't let him. And because of that, the parents wanted to fight back by actually signing up a petition with the help of Grace Randolph. Yeah, another reason why I lost respect from her. Uh, let's face it, she's always been crazy. Whatever. But I guess this whole thing paid off very well for 2018. Now that we got a PG-13 version for the holiday season. So now we get to see the movie all severely toned down with censored nude shots. Yeah, they cut down all the strong language and the excessive graphic violence so it's little to no blood in the movie that's all it is so you're just watching a different version of the movie but with Deadpool kidnapping Fred Savage from the Wonder Years and the Princess Bride which interesting enough we get a replica of the bedroom scene in The Princess Bride, you know, where, you know, the grandfather played by Peter Falk is telling the story about The Princess Bride with his grandson who was very sick and he has this entire room that's filled with a Cheetos bag, a, a Captain America um, action figure and all the rest of the stuff here. Well, this is just like it, but only this time they added new, a few new things. The Cheetos bag is still there. They even had some hol holiday decorations because, after all, this is this is for the holiday season, so they're trying to go for that. I mean, which makes you wonder: Why couldn't this be a Christmas movie instead, instead of just being an alternative cut to Deadpool 2? Exactly. I mean, granted, though, I love the idea of actually doing a take on. The Princess Bride, I mean, now that we lost uh, the original writer, uh, William Goldsman, who passed away uh, in 2018. Also who passed away in 2018 is not other than, you guessed it, the head of Marvel himself, the comic book writer, Stan Lee. There's even a scene where when they show the art mural of Stan Lee in the original Deadpool 2 as we know it the, the theatrical cut and even the super duper cut well at least we, we actually show it but in this cut it says R.I.P. which means rest in peace he passed away so what a dedication uh, okay so it's basically simple. Deadpool kidnaps Red Savage inside a replica of his bedroom when he played the role. And this is where they throw in some lame jokes such as saying about Deadpool is from Marvel but he's actually Marvel that's licensed by Fox. That's like the Beatles being produced by Nickelback. It's music but it sucks. That's the joke. Of course, because Nickelback is from Canada. We all know that Ryan Reynolds is from Canada. A lot of Canadian jokes here. <laughs> I mean, I'm surprised they didn't throw in an Ellen Page joke that I would have expected. You know, and here's another thing that's really amazing. They didn't even throw in a joke where he was on the TV show The Wonder Years. Yes, because remember he played uh, Kevin Arnold? Like, I would have loved to see Deadpool actually throw in a joke where, hey, did you bone the Wendy Cooper for real? 
I mean, that would have been funny. Jeez, they couldn't even do that. Or maybe even do an awkward uh, narration for some reason. You know, like when they do those awkward pauses, and that's what they did right there. They could have thrown a narration that's, that's similar to Daniel Stern when he played the adult Kevin Arnold. Oh, yeah. Now, let's, let's get to the history here. The main reason why they did this was, number one, it's for charity. Yes, that means that this is a cash grab. So that way they can donate a dollar for F bleep cancer. Yeah, just so they could fight for cancer. So that's why they want to donate. Which would later be called fudge cancer. He has a take on a Christmas story right there. You know, the, the word fudge. Two... They want this movie to do so well so that way they can bring it to China so it can become a hit. So that way they can see the edited version. Free, of course. You know, Deadpool gets a kidnap, Fred Savage. Four, since we're already dealing with Fox uh, merging with uh, Disney, yes, they even throw a joke on that in the movie. Um,. It seems like they're just doing it on their own terms. Since they couldn't even throw that joke in the R-rated version of Deadpool 2. Yeah, so they had to cut that out, which is ridiculous. Uh, which leads to number five. They replaced the release date of Alita Battle Angel, which is supposed to be released in December of last year, but it winds up being released and pushed back to February. I can't wait for that, too. And it's a shame. So, big mistake, Fox. Big mistake. Ay. So, I guess at this point on, since I already reviewed Deadpool 2, I think I'm just going to keep it short and simple. Meanwhile, it's just going to be about the scenes of, of Deadpool and, and Fred Savage here. And now that it's on Blu-ray, since it came out this week, yeah, $14.99, I'm not going to waste my money on it. I only saw this online because, well, I, I had to be curious about it. I want to see how how long did they actually cut the, these scenes and, and maybe put a few deleted scenes here and there. And maybe some a few new scenes that, that didn't quite make it, so it tells it by frame rate than exactly what I really expected. But... It's just what I predicted. Okay. <laughs> That's going to go on and on and on. Well, let's get to the review. Stars Ryan Reynolds, Fred Savage, Josh Brolin, Marina Brockman, Julianne Dennison, Zazie Beetz, TJ Miller, Brianna Hellebrand, Jack Kesey, Stefan Kapslik and Leslie Egums, which also have cameo appearances uh, by the X Force team itself Terry Crews, Louis Tan, Bill Skarsgård, uh, Rob Delaney, Brad Pitt, yes. There's even the, uh, cameos for the X Men, such as James McAvoy, Nicholas Holt, Evan Peters. Ty Sheridan, Alexandra Ship, and Cody Smith McPhee. Even Hugh Jackman makes an appearance. It's written by, of course, Reed Weiss, Paul Wernick, and Ryan Reynolds, and it's directed by David Litch. The movie begins as we start. We meet Fred Savage that's being kidnapped inside a replica of the Princess Bride bedroom set by Deadpool himself. Yeah, Wade Wilson. So they decided to tell a story about a PG-13 cut of Deadpool 2. So, short and simple. Deadpool works as a mercenary for two years. It actually cuts right to the scene where he was just taking out all the bad guys and was ready to go after um, that one guy 
who just uh, locked himself inside a panic room. Yeah, so they didn't get to show all the scenes from the beginning where he actually blows himself up, you know, s setting it up uh, by committing suicide after what happened. Uh, I mean, it goes pretty fast, too. <laughs> so, so that's been cut out. It didn't even have the opening sequence, you know, even in the style of Flash Dance or any other with the song Ashes being played by Celine Dion, so that's been cut. So it just goes directly to that scene. Um, meanwhile, we just see Deadpool and and Fred Savage just interrupting, you know, providing their own commentary here and there with all the jokes. Okay, well, <laughs> so anyway, Wade Wilson fails to to kill one of his targets on his anniversary with his girlfriend Vanessa who's just ready to become pregnant ready to have a new child but blames himself for her death so because of that he decided to kill himself by blowing himself to pieces he, he's only left with just a ski bolt token as an anniversary gift that he gave to, to Vanessa but Colossus suddenly picks him up, put them all together again. Then he wants a recovery in that X Mansion, where Wilson suddenly agrees to join the X Men, but as a trainee. So he, Colossus, and Negasonic Teenage Warhead decided to join in to actually go after a young mutant named Russell Collins, aka Fire Fist at an orphanage called Mutant Re-Education Center. Yeah, he then realized that he was abused by the orphanage staff and kills one of them. And Colossus tries to stop him, but no, no such luck. Both Deadpool and Firefist were arrested and once up inside the ice box. You know, just before uh, Cable, who's a cybernetic soldier, had traveled back in time after his family was murdered by an older version of Fire Fist. So he's about to go all the way back in time, go straight to to the prison where where all the the prisoners are at, yeah, all mutants. So he was trying to f go after Fire Fist, but Wade Wilson himself decided to to stop him. So leads to the fight, and <laughs> well, we you get it. After that, well, he decided to come up with his own team called X Force, which includes Domino. And we all know how that turns out because, well, except for Domino, because she's lucky, the rest of them just died. Well, actually. Uh, Peter actually uh, survived, but he was just covered with uh, projectile vomit when he was about to save uh, <laughs> Psygeist from a garbage truck. Where it leads to where they had to fight uh, Cable when they were going inside the truck that's held by all the other prisoners around. And this is where Firefist release the Juggernaut. So now Firefist is friends with the Juggernaut and actually beats him down. He actually yeah, rips uh, Deadpool apart, which this is where he suddenly grows uh, baby legs. <laughs> and he does that pose, yeah, basic instinct style. Only it's censored with the uh, pixelated blur. Even censor his ass, too because they had to go for the joke. All the languages are cut down, of course. And it's only little to no blood. So you don't see any blood splattered here and there. And you do see some edit cuts here and there. So, there you go. So then uh, Wilson and the rest of the teams, that also includes uh, the, the cab driver, you know, with the help of Cable to actually stop him. Because even though Cable wanted to plan to kill uh, Russell, 
But then, well, then Wade decided to go back to the uh, the X Mansion to actually um, just to apologize to to Colossus to see if he can join in along with Naked Son of Teenage Warhead and and Yukio. <laughs> So now they have to go around just trying to, you know, to stop Russell from actually killing the the headmaster at um, the mutant reeducational re center. So, well, we all lead to what happens next, because yes, he was, because Way Wilson was ready to kill himself by putting the collar on, and so on and so forth before Cable decided to go back in time, because. You know, just to fix everything, and things will be just fine. And yes, we all know how everything goes at the end. You know, where they actually rebuilt the device from from Cable, and he gets to travel back in time, so he gets to, you know, go back to his uh, girlfriend, uh, Brunessa. You know, just when he finally stops uh, the bad guy, and then next, you know, he gets to go back in time, where X Men Origins Wolverine left off at the end. Where he was a different version of of uh, Deadpool, but he, he shot he actually shot him, and then of course went back in time to shoot the actor Ryan Reynolds just when he was ready to get the role of the Green Lantern <laughs> in the script. So then we just go through you know joke after joke, uh, scene after scene with. Deadpool and Fred Savage, you know, doing their commentary. <sighs> but I gotta say, I did like some of the jokes where they mentioned about uh, Matt Damon and and you know Brad Pitt and everything. Like even throwing all the censored uh, bleeps to almost act like he was he wants to fuck Matt Damon instead of fight Matt Damon. <laughs> So I gotta admit that was pretty funny. But he's also trying to be smart too here and there. <sighs> it's just really a waste of time. I mean, what what's the point? If you want to see Deadpool and Deadpool 2 as it is, especially the super duper cut, which is highly recommended since I do own both of them on Blu-ray, then you'd be better off watching that instead. But I guess if you're curious to watch this just for Fred Savage and Deadpool scenes alone, uh, I mean, just for the sake of it, then it's worth it. Um, I mean, I did laugh still, but mostly from Deadpool 2's perspective. And I did laugh at a few of the, the funniest moments, you know, with both Fred Savage and and Deadpool, and yes, they even throw in an up joke. And by the way, I, I sort of made a mistake when I shared this on on Facebook, you know, when I saw the trailer, because most of the jokes are in the trailer. I thought that was uh, Ed Asner at first, but it really wasn't Ed Asner. It was just some other random old guy. And I know there was a scene where, you know, he actually kills himself by actually trying to <laughs> to have all the, the animals attack, you know, when he went to to the local zoo with all the kids around. I, I really hope that they do get a Deadpool free. I mean, now that they just canceled, you know, X Force. Yeah, there's supposed to be an X Force movie, you know, with Deadpool joining in. But I guess we can't have that now. You know, thanks to Fox and Disney for for now uh, owning the company. So uh, get goodness knows what they're gonna do with this company since they already fucked up Fox Family Channel. Yeah, remember back in 2001 when they merged with the Fox Family properties? They turned Fox Family into ABC Family, which is now Freeform. Um, all of the Fox Kids shows have been are no longer on anymore because yeah, which will later become Jetix, because now Fox has their own Saturday morning block called Foxbox uh, and suddenly works together with 4Kids Entertainment which is no longer around so we all know how that happens and we no longer had a weekday morning block so everything is just filled with talk shows and the only way we get to watch all these shows is on Saturday mornings 
So it really sucks. And we only get compilation DVDs of all the Marvel shows too, so we didn't get enough. Not even complete series sets until later on. And we still haven't had a complete series set of, of X-Men and Spider-Man and all that in North America, and, unless it's Canada. I, I, know Can, I know Canada has a, uh, a box set on DVD. <sighs> Whatever, man. It's just ridiculous. It's just like when Saturday Night Fever, which was originally an R-rated film that came out in 1977, had later had a PG-rated cut, mostly because the movie was so successful, and it's also because uh, John Travolta was ready to do his next film, Grease, with Olivia Newton-John, and they were going to release it as a double feature, so that way people can see both Saturday Night Fever in a PG-rated cut, and Greece together. And we all knew why the producer hated that cut. That he only released it once on VHS and never on any uh, physical media format ever again. So, so now we're stuck with the R-rated cut exactly the way we had it. And of course we also had the director's cut that follows. Because there's also a director's cut uh, for the new Blu-ray. I, I do have the theatrical cut of of Saturday Night Fever from the old Blu-ray. I'd be curious to pick that up someday. <sighs> On top of that, it, it's like watching a TV cut of Deadpool 2. I mean, there is a TV cut of of the first Deadpool. So exactly what you expect. There's going to be a lot of dubbing of all the the bad words and all that. And I'm probably going to cut down a bit of the, the graphic violence, but maybe they might still keep it in there, just in case. But it's mostly just going to be edited down to size. So what's the point? Exactly. Just stick to the original Deadpool and Deadpool 2 because they're so much better. They were very successful. I mean, it's still hilarious after all this time. Still funny. You get tons of features on there. You get to see all the stuff that that didn't uh, quite make it and how they've done it. So what's the point on wasting 15 bucks? on a PG-13 cut when you can already watch it the way it is. But of course it's because of star power and everything and charity and it's because it's a cash grab so they have to do something for the holiday season. So Fox has no choice. And it's such a shame too because I really love Fred Savage. You know he's a great child actor from the 80's and 90's. You know I loved him as Kevin Arnold in the Wonder Years. I love the movies that he's done, such as The Boy Who Could Fly, The Princess Bride, as I mentioned several times already in this video. But hey, nevertheless, it's a classic. Uh, vice versa, and even The Wizard. So, really shows that he's a very talented guy. I bet he had fun doing the movie just for the sake of it, but at this point on, He's just wasting his time. It's almost like how he wasted his time playing a role where he actually had a mole in Awesome Powers and Gold Member. Yeah, that was a bad sequel. But what can we do? And I love Deadpool. You know, I'm just glad that I owned the first two on Blu-ray. And it's a fun comic book, and it's always great to see. Deadpool always coming up with some raunchy jokes, yeah, hard-edged jokes, breaks the fourth wall while being a mercenary, you know, taking down all the bad guys around, you know, slicing and dicing you know, with his swords on, on the back, has his gun, you know, with his entire pack, with filled with ammo, you know, does all these moves, I mean, everything. 
and he's always worth watching. So, so don't bother. So, I'm just gonna give one upon a dip pool <sighs> with all of its moments. One and a half star. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.